good morning students in the last class i was uh, discussing with you about the uh, introduction to euclid's geometry right in that uh, i explained to you what is uh, what are axioms what are postulates and uh, i told you to just read out the textbook what is there at the beginning they had given the history of geometry how the geometry came into existence why euclid is called as father of geometry and then what are his postulates i told you to write and uh, practice those now we will move on to the exercise uh, 2.1 accordingly we have in the page number uh, 35 exercise 2.1 which of the following statements are true and which are false give reason for your answers i hope you have the page with you that is the question number 1 only one line can cross through a single point whether it is true or false okay one line can cross through a single point it is false why it is it is possible to draw innumerable number of lines through a point so as a result of that that statement is false no reason is it is possible to draw infinite number of lines through a point next there are an infinite number of lines which pass through two distinct point this is also false why is it through two distinct point it is possible to draw only one line not many lines so as a result of that it is also false the answer is the answer is it is possible to draw only a line uh, which pass through two distinct point now come to third question a terminated line can be produced indefinitely on both the sides yes this is terminated line you can imagine so it can be extended or produced indefinitely on either side is true next if two circles are equal then the radii are equal so we can say if two circles if and only if they are equal they, they have the same radius as a result of that they will have the same circumference hence it is true next come to the fifth figure in that ab is equal to b2 fifth one a b is equal to b2 and b2 is equal to x1 so as a result of that then a b is equal to x1 yes it is true why is it a or a b is equal to b2 is given our a b is equal to what is b2 b2 is same as x1 as a result of that we will get this one hence it is true now come to the next main that is second main it is important for general purpose also and you need to learn those definitions of those things important for examination point of view now the second one right what is the second main give the definition of each of the following terms or there the terms that need to be defined first what are they and how might you can define them so now come to this one the first one is parallel lines so what are parallel lines as you know these are parallel lines are the lines which do not intersect even though they extend to infinity for example this ab is a one line and bq is another line these lines never intersect each other so that the distance uh, the angle between them is always uh, right hand uh, okay so here straight sorry, straight hand as a result of that these lines do not intersect each other lines do not intersect each other even though they extend uh, infinitely such lines are called as parallel lines next the second one perpendicular lines see here if the two lines intersect at right angles at right angles then those lines are called as perpendicular lines if two lines intersect at right angles then they are called as perpendicular lines then third one is line segment so here the line segment is what uh, it is a line joining between any two points it is called as a line segment a straight line joining between any two points a straight line joining between any two points is called as line segment what is radius of circle now this is a circle you imagine here oe r op oe is equal to op they are called as uh, radii what is radius 
the distance between the center of the circle to the circumference of the circle is called as radius of the circle. The distance between the center of the circle to the circumference is called as the radius of the circle. Now we move on to the last one, uh, fifth one, square. What is square? Square is what? It is a quadrilateral. Friends, quadrilateral having all the sides equal. Square is a quadrilateral, all the sides are equal and all the angles are equal to 90 degrees. All the angles are or right angles. Such a geometrical figure is called as square. Now consider, consider two postulates given below. So do these postulates contain any identified terms or these postulates are consistent? Actually these postulates are not consistent. They are based on Euclidean axioms. We will see that in the next part of the class, uh, means the no, uh, regular classes. Now move on to the page number 36, they are the question number 4. What, is, what it says in question number 4? such that AC is equal to BC, then prove that AC is equal to AB. Now this is AB, C lies such that uh, AC is equal to BC is given. Right, AC is then as equal to BC. Now what you have to prove is that AC is half of AB. It's like by drawing the figure. Is the position. Now, I hope this is clear what is what the figure says. Now, here AB is what? It is AC plus BC. He had given that what we have to prove? We have to prove that AC is equal to half of AB we have to prove. Alright. So now, and another thing what he has given is AC is equal to BC plus given. Now, in place of BC, I am going to substitute AC only. Why means it is AC is same as BC. As a result of that, we can do that one. Alright. Now, AB is equal to AC plus AC is 2AC. If you want AC, AC is equal to becomes half of AB. I hope it is clear to you. I got it for 2 mark. Now, it is given that we need to prove AC is equal to half of AB and AC is equal to BC is given. According to the figure, AB can be written as AC plus BC. As it is given, AC is same as BC. Instead of BC, I am going to substitute it as AC only. So as a result of that, AC plus AC is 2AC. If you want AC, you know, half of AB. I hope it is clear to you. Next. In the question 4, C is called as a midpoint of line segment AB. Prove that every line segment has only one midpoint. So, that is also more or less the same method. In the figure 6 question, AC is equal to BD. Then prove that AB is equal to C. That will be. is given that AC is same as BD. Now, here AC can be written as AB plus BC. Similarly, this point is correct. Yes. AC can be written as AB plus BC. Similarly, BD can be written as BD can be written as B 
DC plus C. Did you follow? AD can be written as so AC can be written as AD plus DC. Similarly, DD can be written as CD plus PC. Now, here it is given that AC is equal to BD. So why? This one becomes equal to 2 R accordingly. AB is equal to so AB plus BC is equal to DC plus C. Is there any doubt? Now DC BC is same. As a result of that, it get cancelled. Therefore, it will get AB is equal to CD. C. The question given that AC is equal to BD. We need to prove that AB is equal to CD. So from the figure, AC can be written as AB plus BC, or it has one. Similarly, BD or BP can be written as CD plus BC. Call it as two. Now, this given that AC is same as BD, as a result of that, one becomes equal to two. This is equal to this one. Here, BC and BC is same. As a result of that, it will cancel. So we left with AB is equal to C. One more question is there in that one, so that we will discuss in the uh, regular class. Okay, now it is given equivalent questions of Euclid's fifth postulate. All right, so there are some more questions and exercise two point two. So in this, how would you uh, rewrite uh, Euclid's fifth postulate so that it would be easier to understand? Does the Euclid's fifth postulate imply the existence of parallel lines? Explain. So these two questions we will, uh, along with the other questions, we will discuss in the normal class. So in this lesson, what you have to uh, concentrate more is that. So what are axioms? What are postulates? What is point? What are lines? Okay. And uh, examples for axioms are as state any axioms, and there are five postulates. So read those five postulates. Among that, uh, they may ask you uh, write any two postulates or two axioms like that. After that, you had the exercise in that question uh, whether it is true or false. Like that type of one question will be there, and then the next main define those that is parallel lines, perpendicular lines, square, uh, circle, etc., etc. So that you need to learn. After that, this kind of sums. So. Uh, in the geometry, two lessons you had on the Heron's formula, and this lesson you need to prepare for your uh, metamorphic examination. Now, along with that, uh, another lesson that is number system, and then one more lesson. Uh, in that, after three exercises, I will explain that will be there for your metamorphic examination. So, what it is the, the next lesson that is from algebra polynomials, we will see now. Okay. Before going to polynomials, in the last uh, year or the previous year, we might have studied algebraic expressions, right? What are algebraic expressions? The expressions that involve variable as well as lateral coefficients are called as algebraic expressions. In that, what are the different types of expressions you study? You study monomial, binomial. Y, these are examples for us, monomials. 
under the binomial, it's the number of things plus 1 squared. Okay, 9y plus 6. Alright, x squared plus y squared. These are examples for the binomials. Similarly, binomials. t squared plus 2t plus 1. x squared plus y squared plus 2x squared. So on top of all examples for the binomials. Okay, so now in this, polynomials having more than one term is called as polynomial. Actually, uh, having the algebra expression having only one term is called as monomial and the two term is called as binomial. Along with that, uh, the polynomial having three terms is called as trinomial. Generally, these comes under polynomials. Okay. Now, another important thing what you have to notice is that in between the plus sign minus sign is there, then it becomes a binomial. 1 plus is there means uh, minus is there means binomial. When it is into is there, it is monomial only. So that concept you need to understand since so it your minus to be. So in between our uh, terms, there is 1 plus r, uh, sorry, 2 plus r minus sign r, 1 minus and plus sign. Such a type of equation expressions are called as trinomials. Okay, so now generally how the polynomial is um, expressed. Come to page number one. Here we have on page number 62. So generally polynomial is expressed in this format is an x to the power n plus an minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus so on plus a1x plus an so it is zero this is the general representation of polynomial ok so in that comes degree of polynomial what is degree of polynomial here usually expression will be one variable so in that highest power of the expression or variable is called as degree of polynomial. Here you have x squared plus 2x plus 5. So here the highest degree is 2. Similarly it may be 3 also or 5 also. The highest degree of the variable in the expression it is called as degree of the variable. The highest power of the variable that is present is called as degree of that polynomial. Okay? Degree of polynomial is what? It is highest power of the variable that is present with the given polynomial is called as degree of the polynomial. Okay. Now, come to this page number uh, 63. There you have exercise 4.1. Shall we move on to that one? I hope you followed what are polynomials in that, what are monomials, what are, what are monomials, binomials, trinomials and then in that, the here for example, now the variable which is having highest degree, okay, two, it is called as quadrinomial or else it is, this type of equation is called as quadratic equation. Another equation that is x plus uh, 5. Here the highest degree of variable is only 1. This is called as linear equation. This is called as quadratic equation. And similarly, the power is 3. 3 plus uh, 2x plus 5 you match. Here, this uh, highest degree of the variable is 3. As a result of that, this is considered as the equation. So you have three types of equation. Generally, we will discuss uh, any more lessons. That is linear equation, quadratic equation, as well as cubic equation. So this and all linear equation is all you studied in one lower class. Even in this standard, you have this type of equation that is quadratic equation. So this year also you will have the uh, questions or else the lesson related to uh, having the highest degree in two 
that the type of equations or other called as quadratic equation and then the cubic equation. Now move on to page number 63. There you have exercise 4.1. First one, x square to 4x square minus 3x plus 7, it is a polynomial in one expression. Okay. Come to the second one, that is uh, y square plus root 2. It is also a polynomial in one variable, true, it is a polynomial. Come to the third equation, that is third expression, the third question, 3 root t plus t into root 2. Here, 3 into root t is, t can be, root t can be written as t to the power half. The power of the variable should be half whole number. So here it is a uh, fraction, hence it is not a polynomial. Similarly, fourth one, when you come to y plus 2 by y, 2 by 2 by y can be written as, y plus 2 by y can be written as, y plus 2 into y to the power minus 1. So as I told you, power of the variable should be, whole number, minus 1 is not a whole number, as a result of that, that is also not a polynomial. Next, when you come to the fifth one, x to the power 10, y to the power 3 and t to the power 50 is there. Here are three different variables are there. So hence, it is not a polynomial in one variable. Now come to this one, second question, write the coefficient of x square in each of the following cases. So in that first one is what? 2 plus x square plus x. So in the second one is what? 2 minus x square plus x cube. Third one is what? 5 by 2 x square plus x. Okay. And in the fourth one, we don't have x square term. as a result of that. Coefficient of x square a x zero we can say. Okay, write the coefficient of x square in the following expression. Here x square is here. There is no coefficient in such a case. The coefficient is one. Here there is no number, but you have minus sign as a result of that coefficient is minus one. Here along with x square, what do we have? We have pi by two. Coefficient of x square in this expression is pi by two. Here it is 